Hi, everybody, and welcome to tonight's live stream. Uh, I'm Todd Scholl, the Professional Practice and Policy Teaching Fellow for the South Carolina Education Association, also working closely with the National Education Association. And uh, with us tonight, we have Brandy Bixler, who is the Digital Integration Specialist with the NEA. And we are here to introduce to you our new VSCEA branded micro credential portal and to talk all things micro credentials. Um, and so we are just really excited about these resources because the State Department here in South Carolina just recently approved these micro credentials for renewal credits. And of course, you need to check with your district before you start taking one of the courses to ensure that they're going to approve it. But the State Department has approved it and we couldn't be more thrilled to have close to 200 micro credential courses for you to uh, explore and to sort of create your own professional learning pathway. Um, and really that's what we need to be doing is giving teachers voice and choice in their own professional learning. So I'm gonna, um, the first of all, say welcome Brandy to the live stream. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Great, yeah, I'm happy to be here and, and talk about our wonderful micro credentials. And you are coming to us live from Fort Collins. Tell us what, what the weather's like out there in Fort Collins right now. It's about negative four degrees and it's snowing and um, I'm staying inside where it's nice and warm until this goes away. Yeah, um, well here in Myrtle Beach, I think it went to 77 today and it was very sunny. Not to make you feel bad or anything, but there are some advantages to living in South Carolina. Although I will say, I was in Colorado a couple of times over the past year, and it's such a beautiful state. Um, went to Rocky Mountain National Park and flew into Denver and went up to Boulder and through Fort Collins and up to Cheyenne and just a, just a gorgeous part of the country. So um, I don't really envy the negative four, but the, the snow, the mountains and stuff and, uh, and the vibe out there, I definitely envy. So welcome. So welcome tonight, Brandy. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you just sort of take us on that tour and premiere this portal to our those who are watching tonight. Okay, so I thought I'd get us started tonight with just kind of the basics about micro credentials. In a lot of places, these are a new way of learning and um, NEA has been doing them for about five years now. So um, we've, we've refined our process and um, we have now developed about 200 micro credentials to choose from. And so basically what a micro credential is, is it's a digital um, award. It's a digital badge that you are offered um, for a competency or a skill. So it's, it's competency based. It's not, um, it's not seat time based, right? So for a lot of systems, that's a whole new idea for, I mean, I think we started this with students some time ago, at least in Colorado, but for, for adults, you know, it's still a new idea. Um, so all of our micro credentials are about 15 hours of work and they have a competency. And then um, you would upload like job embedded um, artifacts to show that you have met that competency and then you would be awarded a badge. That's cool. Yeah, I like the idea of badges. I have to admit, um, I was a I was a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout, and I love the idea of badges. So this really uh, sort of piques that sort of former uh, sort of motivation for me. I really like that. Yeah, and they're very much like um, that Boy Scout badges for adults and teachers and educators. So. <laughs> Yes, they're almost the same thing, only instead of building a fire, you can write a lesson plan. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, I know you have a presentation. Feel free to share your screen and just uh, and go ahead, go ahead, go away. I mean, not go away, but just go ahead. Yeah, your presentation. All right, so here is kind of a, a matrix that shows the difference between our NEA micro-credentials and some traditional PD. And, um, you know, a lot of these are pretty big change and a big shift. So I'm really happy to know that um, you guys have started moving towards accepting this type of professional learning for credits. So, um, 
the content choice is one and traditionally, you know, the school district or your principal decides what content you need to learn and then you are sitting through a presentation and learning it. But in our micro credentials, we have a lot of different topics and a lot of micro credentials to choose from. So you get to choose where you wanna grow and learn and practice your skills. Um, the, the authors of all of our micro credentials are educators. So we really do believe in um, our, our members as the experts in the field. So we provide professional learning for educators by educators. And this was kind of the first um, step into that arena that we took about five years ago. And it's been very, very well received. Um, micro credentials are also job embedded. So you would never be asked to like write a paper or do something that wasn't part of the job that you do daily. So whether you're a classroom teacher or you are, um, you're an advocate working in an advocacy role or a teacher leadership mentor role, the micro credential, um, I call them projects, are part of that job. So you get to practice the skills while you're learning it. Um, it's very learner centered. It's not institution centered, you know, that it's not based on your pacing guides or um, or lesson planning formats that you've been asked to do. It's 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 you centered. It's your student centered. Um, and then the collaboration in a traditional PD, sometimes there's no collaboration and sometimes it's all collaboration but you have no choice in how much you want to collaborate with others. With a micro-credential, you can collaborate with a colleague and, and work on earning micro-credentials together, or you can work on it by yourself. So you get to decide where your entry point is with collaboration. And um, the determination of mastery is not done by your employer. It's not done by um, Pearson or some other, you know, outside arena where they're not um, necessarily educators. Right. Um, all of our micro credentials are reviewed by two educators. Um, so you submit a micro credential, and it's two educators, um, your peers that review it and they offer you feedback if the competency wasn't met. And if it was met, um, you get to earn the badge and you can submit as many times as you want. Um, we really view it as an opportunity for some light coaching, right? right. If you turn something in and you, know, you might get some um, good prompts to push your learning even further from the feedback. Um, the portability, you know, traditional PD usually stays within your district. Um, you get a, a lane increase or a stipend or whatever your district offers you. But when you leave that school district, you leave that, um, that credential or that evidence or that certificate behind and you start scratch if you go somewhere else. But with the micro-credential, you always have that micro-credential. And um, now that it's offered at the state level, um, it will follow you from district to district. I think the thing that I love about this, Brandy, is, you know, we've been talking for a long time about differentiating instruction for our students and giving them voice and choice in their learning. And I think a lot of educators, including myself, felt like, well, when are we going to get that? You know, and it's it's really nice to be given this this sort of this portal, this opportunity to choose from a, such a great variety of, of micro credentials and to figure out what, what do we need to know at this point in our career? What, where are some gaps in our knowledge or what are some things that we're really interested in and want to learn more about? And it's just so cool to be given this uh, opportunity to do it at a time of our choosing and the, the type of content that interests us instead of, like you said, it's instead of it being, uh, you know, imp, imp, you know, imposed upon you by somebody else and saying, you've got to go to this. It's, it's just a great thing to give teachers these, these options and the, the, the choice in their own learning pathways. Absolutely. All right, so 
our micro credentials and most micro credential um, systems that you will see are organized, you know, by stacks. But um, for NEA, these are very NEA um, specific kind of pieces of information that might be helpful to you. So first of all, each of our micro credentials is written to take about 15 hours of your time. And that includes all of the learning and um, that you need to do before you do your um, projects. And then it includes your project time and then your reflection time. So we, we intentionally aim for 15 hours because most systems are 15 hours is one unit or one credit. Um, Micro-credentials are organized by topic. So we have educator ethics, we have classroom management, we have arts integration, we have technology integration. So each of these um, topics has multiple micro-credentials in it. And the, the topic is called a stack, right? So there might be six micro-credentials in a classroom management stack and eight in the ethics stack, but that is called a stack. There is no need to finish an entire stack. There is no need, you know, you, I don't even think you get bonus points unless your um, state or district or association is offering some kind of additional certification for earning multiple micro credentials in a stack. Um, it really is just a way to organize by topic so that you can find what you need. But there are some people who are collectors, like Todd sounds to be, who want to collect every badge in a stack, and that's okay too. So um, it really, it's very flexible that way. Um, you can choose a micro-credential from the ELL stack and another one from the classroom management stack and another one from the technology integration stack, if that's what you and your students need. Um, all of our micro-credentials are issued by NEA. Um, the assessors um, are paid by NEA to review these. So they won't say, you know, South Carolina um, Education Association. They will say NEA Education Association because we are the ones putting our endorsement on them. Um, the micro credentials that you'll see in the SCEA portal are NEA micro credentials, but they're ones that um, SCEA chose specifically for you based on what they know about you and your interest in the state's um, policies. And um, NEA micro-credentials all have a third-party validator. So it's not just NEA saying, hey, this is great, you should do this. Um, we, our biggest third-party validator is Digital Promise, and they've been in the micro-credential business since it began. Um, but we also have like Code VA as our computer science validator. We have um, the University of Maryland Mental Health Department as our third party validator for the trauma and our um, diversity, equity, and cultural competence stack. So we do seek that outside expertise to make sure that our micro credentials are best practice and research based and valuable. And this also helps you say, hey, this is, this is worthy professional development. I deserve a credit for it. So um, NEA doesn't actually offer the credit because we're a national organization and every state, even sometimes every local has things done differently and accepts different things. But South Carolina is working on a system so that they can offer you credit for your micro-credentials. Um, in Colorado, it's done district by district so the state doesn't do it, but the school districts do. So it really just kind of depends on where you are, but NEA is not the one to give you credit. We are the ones to give you that badge. What people do with it um, and what they earn for it is determined at a more local le level. Um, they don't cost anything for members. Um, if you are a non-member, it's $75 per micro-credential, but the good news is you can always become a member and earn as many micro-credentials as you want at no cost. Awesome. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to uh, just say uh, the really, it's just, just a cool thing to, to peek through the different stacks 
And there is that temptation out. Like I want to get through the, like the OCD part of me says like, I've got to do every single one in the stack. Right. But it is also cool maybe to do like one from uh, several different stacks that interest you and then follow up with, okay, well that, that particular stack was the one most interesting to me. And as far as South Carolina goes, what we've been told is that, so we, you have to get um, 120 hours of renewal credits every five years to re get your cert uh, certification renewed here. And so I believe, don't hold me to this, but I believe the State Department has said they would count each of these credentials at, at least 12, 12 of those, if not 15 of those hours. But again, you do need to go to your district's professional development coordinator, uh, the person that that is in charge of um, taking your uh certificates and, uh, and and the credentials that you're using to, to recertify. And before you start these courses, just check with those folks at your district to say, hey, you know, how many, how many hours, how many renewal credits am I going to get for this particular course? And they can kind of work with you. And then if, if they have any questions, or if they say they're not going to give you any credit, then you can reach out to me, Todd Scholl at gmail.com. And we'll go to bat for you. And we'll talk with some folks at the State Department to see if we can work that out for you, but um, just wanted to throw that out there. So. Great, so first step is school district. Right. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so this is kind of how it works in a nutshell. So you are going to find a topic that you're interested in and choose a micro credential and it could be based on something you want to learn and get better at. It could also be based on something you do really well and just want credit for doing it really well. So you can approach it either way, like um, certifying that you met a competency and something you know you're really good at already. Or I want to practice my, um, my ethics skills. Um, I want to build that into my professional portfolio. So I'm going to learn and do at the same time. Um, and there are so one thing I think that really does confuse people, and I'll show you in a minute when I go to the tour, but a micro-credential really is a PDF and everything you need is on that PDF. So the first step is really to download the PDF, read it, work on the projects, um, save that all on your commuter, computer. And then when you are finished with that, go into certification bank and submit it. Once you click the start micro credential button, you have six months to complete it um, and it'll run out on you, which, it, you know, you can always start over again unless you paid and then you have to pay another $75. So I would definitely not click start until you're ready to submit, especially if you're a non-member and you are paying for it. Um, you will, so you'll complete, you know, it might ask you for, to answer some, some um, contextual questions. Um, that's part one. We always have some of that um, background knowledge that we want to give our assessors about who you are, why you're um, earning this micro-credential, who your students are, what you hope to learn. And then part two is usually maybe a larger project that might and most of them connect in some way. So you might do a pre-assessment for your students, analyze that, write a lesson plan to, to address it and do a post assignment and then reflect on that work. And so there's the three parts. One is context, two is kind of that job embedded work and part three is the reflection. And the most important piece of the reflection is to show that you gained something that will follow you into your future practice, because that's that's the most important thing about learning is that you start to own a piece of it. Um, right. Once you submit, it's reviewed by two educators. If it if you passed and you check, you got to check the rubric really carefully because that's what the reviewers use. So you have all the information that they have. So, you know, make sure you go over that rubric very carefully, submit it. Um, when you've hit the mark on all of those proficiency pieces on the rubric, you will be issued a badge. If you miss a few things or um, they wanted, they may want more information based on what the rubric's asking for. 
you can resubmit and you can do that as many times as you wish. And if you did pay for it, you don't have to pay again for resubmissions. That $75 takes you to the finish line and it might take you a couple tries and that's okay. Our pass rate is actually about, I would say 60% um, first time. Okay. Well, I want to mention, I just want to make a connection for anybody who's watching, who's serving as a mentor or knows a mentor. We have a pretty strong um, mentoring program here in South Carolina. And one of the, the, if they've done the South Carolina mentor training, they know that the fourth part of the cycle is connecting new teachers with what are called TLOs or teacher learning opportunities. So if you've established a goal and you sort of figured out an area of growth for this, your new teacher, what a wonderful way to connect them through. You can go through the entire portal of micro-credentials and really connect them with a, 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 one of the micro-credentials that's specifically tied to the goals that you have for them or, where, or an area where, that, where they might be excited about learning about a particular subject or that is really relevant to them and what they're doing day to day. So um, I want to just encourage our mentors in South Carolina or, if, if, or even if you're just a school leader, looking for really good professional development that's tailored and relevant to your educators, really make sure you explore these micro-credentials. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I know when I was a teacher in Colorado, we actually could turn in a professional learning plan um, and have it approved and opt out of the district offered um, professional learning, which was fabulous. Nice. Sometimes the district, um, professional learning didn't hit all the notes for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to take us, do you have, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Just take us on a little tour. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to take you to the um, South Carolina portal and show you what it looks like. And um, this will be a really quick tour. I'm going to pretend like I'm a, I'm a person who wants to work on a micro-credential, and I'll just walk you through that process. Perfect. So these are the um, featured stacks that South Carolina has chosen for you. And so um, these are all really great stacks to look at. But if none of those resonate with you, the whole NEA micro-credential library is below that. And these are all the topics that we have. Um, anywhere from, you know, early career, you know, classroom management pieces and ethics, educator ethics pieces, all the way to like organizing and leadership opportunities. So it's a very wide, and there's even a stack here for cooperating teachers. If you are a mentor, there's micro credentials in that stack that would really meet your need. You could also choose a micro credential to um, work on together with your student teacher or your mentee. Right. And you just have to turn in separate projects and separate reflections because it is an individual project, but collaboration really is um, encouraged from the NEA because we know that collaboration is the takes the learning to a higher level, a deeper level. Brandy, I want to sh that, just show them what it looks like when you go in one of the stacks. And I'm going to ask you to open a specific stack yep. if that's okay. So I know Rick Whitmore is watching and he's been doing some of our roundtable discussions. And we had a roundtable discussion about supporting LGBTQ um, educators and students. And I want folks to see that our values are lining up with what we're, what we're doing in, in, in so many different ways. Um, we have that round table, but now we have, we have a stack um, here of micro-credentials called supporting LGBTQ students. And if you could, I don't know if people can read those. Could you read a couple of titles there so people can see that in, within a stack, there's several core sub sort of micro-credentials within that stack and what those are? Yes. So we have in the LGBTQ micro-credentials, um, we have, you know, things that are for your classroom at your classroom level all the way through taking it to an advocacy level and um, even like um, creating safe workspaces for adults in your building. So um, these are near and dear to my heart as well. A good one to start with is the utilizing proper terminology to talk about LGBTQ topics. Mm. This um, 
gives you the right words. And we all know that words change often. So we will be updating this soon to reflect some of the new changes. But the gist of it is that um, it's a sign of respect when you use the right words to talk to your students about these issues. Right. Um, another really good one for classroom teachers is this developing an anti-bias curriculum. Um, and then, of course, there's like the creating safe and inclusive spaces. So those are three that are very much centered on the classroom level of work. If you um, want to do more around um, policies, um, we have the inclusive workspaces, which would be, you know, making sure that your colleagues in your school building are in a safe and inclusive environment and feel welcome. Um, all the way up to more um, advocating at the national or even state level for policies. So yeah, this really takes you through the range of this. The, I don't know if you've seen the racial justice framework, but it's, um, it's awareness, um, capacity building, and then action. And these cover that whole spectrum. Yeah. That's great. I mean, look, and when you go in here, folks, and I've, I've put the link in the comments. So folks who are watching on Facebook, there's a link in, in the comments. Um, and I will post that again, uh, just to be sure that everybody sees that. But there's a link to, to all of the micro credentials, the whole bank, and you can go in and explore them. You can explore this and you can sort of the PD, if you click view PDF, you can read details about that particular, particular micro credential. And if you're a member, you can go ahead and start and for members, these are all free. That's the crazy thing. Every single one of these is free for members. So if you're not a member, you're going to pay $75, which is fine. But you could, you could instead join the SCEA, get free access to all of these micro-credentials, plus all the other benefits that are you're afforded when you're a member of the SCEA, which, by the way, you also become a member of NEA, the largest union in the United States. And uh, it's really important that we not only come together as educators at the state level, but at the national level. So, and this is such a, um, an amazing free resource. And that's just one of the many, many benefits of, of membership. Yes. So as I said before, you're going to want to look at the PDF first and it's loading, um, but this is what it looks like. So you have a lot of information up front to learn, and then you have research that supports this and resources to go to. You're asked your context questions. You have some artifacts you need to turn in with the rubric, and then you have your reflection questions. And then you would um, start it, and that's where you'd be asked to pay. Right. Um, you have to agree that you're not going to cheat and that, you know, you're not, it's your own work. Um, but then you'll see each thing here is a piece of the work. So when you click begin, you're asked to put your information in here and that submits it. So at the end, after you've done all of it, you have to click the final submit for review. And then that pushes it to the to the reviewers so they can start the review and the review can take up to three weeks. So you need, if you're doing this for recertification or anything high stakes, you need to plan ahead for that because if you need to resubmit, it could take another three weeks. We're not usually that slow, but it could. Right. So not only the renewal credits, but you actually get a, for geeks like me, you get a badge. And can you talk about like what you can do with that badge, Brandy? So um, let me see if I can get to my showcase from here. This is my dashboard. So you'll see when you log in, you'll see all of your information. Um, this is me because I click on a lot of stuff, but you also have a showcase and that's what you would share. So I'm gonna copy that showcase link. I'm gonna paste it in here and I don't have any badges right now, but if I did, it would show like all the badges I earned here. Right. Um, and you could share this link, you know, to turn in for credit. You can, um, it says here that they're about, worth about 15 hours. So that, that's what proves it has your name here. 
So that also validates that it's yours and it's not just a picture. And then when you click on the badges, the PDF comes up so that the person who is, who is giving you the credit can see everything you had to do to yeah. earn that micro-credential. Um, and there's also like, if you use Badger or some other badge collection site to collect all your badges, there is infer there's metadata baked into the the technical pieces of the micro credentials they they can actually validate as your badge and your badge alone and and can you put that in your email signature or anything like that is that possible no um yeah i mean you can always like take a screenshot and put it in your email signature you could put the link to your showcase collection in your signature you can um you know, you could share it on LinkedIn, you could share it on Facebook, you could right. send it in an email. So there's lots of ways to share that um, collection. Right. And if your system isn't set up to take a link as a digital badge, you can take a screenshot and turn it in, or you can um, copy and paste the link to a Word doc and turn that in. I know that I get a lot of questions about how do I turn in a digital badge? They want something printed. And so that's a way to screenshots or a way to gotcha. print it. Um, gotcha. Later on, we are talking about developing transcripts and um, printable badges. So that's coming. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Brandy, thank you. That was a wonderful tour. And I, I, I hope uh, the educators here in South Carolina are just as excited as I am for this portal to be now available. And, and now that we have the State Department's stamp of approval uh, on these courses, um, all they have to do is be a member. You get, you get it for free. Um, if you're not a member, go to jointhescea.org. That's jointhescea.org. Become a member and there's a bunch of other really cool benefits and you'll get access to all of these micro-credentials courses for free. And um, all you have to do is just check with your uh, the folks at your district level to make sure that they're going to approve them. Again, if if they say they won't, email me, toddshull at gmail.com. We'll follow up and have a discussion with them, maybe some folks at the State Department to clarify any questions that they may have since this is fairly new. But um, what a wonderful uh, just resource for educators to take charge of their own learning instead of, uh, instead of always having to hope that the district provides them something relevant now they can go. And if you can't find something that's relevant there, boy, I, I feel for feel for you because there's so many great options. It's just like which where to where to start. Like there, there's so many cool things to choose from. So, Brandy, any final thoughts before we sign off for tonight? No, I'm just um, I'm going to wish you luck on your micro credential journey. And um, I'm really excited that you have this coming to your district soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Brandy, for your time tonight and for everybody at the NEA who's working to, to make these micro-credentials so, such a wonderful and, um, and outstanding uh, resource for our educators. And for those tuning in, again, join the SCEA.org. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight and uh, being a part of our movement to create the kind of schools that our educators and their students deserve. You guys have a wonderful night. Bye. Thank you. Bye.